have crypto airdrops become so toxic that they might actually be dead? Also, how can people be so mad about them when they're basically just giving away free money? Well, a few years ago, it'd be unimaginable to ask these questions. But now, after a string of high profile flops, the community as a whole has soured on them. When you talk to everyone involved, from farmers to the team to everyone in between, most of them say that it's become a lose-lose situation with no good outcomes. That's why we gotta ask ourselves, what the heck is going on here? And more importantly, is there any hope for airdrops in the future? Well, before we answer that, we gotta rewind a bit and talk about how we got here in the first place. You see, airdrops have been around for quite a while now, but what really cemented them as a mainstay in the crypto world was Uniswap's massive airdrop in 2020. At its peak, the airdrop was worth an insane $6.4 billion, which is still the biggest by far, and it got the whole crypto world hooked. No one in their right mind could ever imagine a bank or financial institution essentially giving away $6 billion. So when this happened, everyone sat up and took notice. Since then, the 50 largest airdrops have distributed over $26 billion to millions of crypto wallets, which just shows how big of an impact they've had. However, all that free money led to a sort of gold rush where everyone wanted a piece of the pie. And this, unfortunately, is when the problems started to occur. One of the biggest problems that emerged was a breakdown in the alignment of incentives between the different participants involved. The whole point of an airdrop is that you get rewards in return for using the underlying protocol. But what started to become clear was that the rewards for people like you and I were often being diminished in favor of the founders and VCs. Those insiders managed to get a massive advantage over the rest of us as they knew all the tips and tricks for eligibility so they could get tokens at the lowest price and then dump on us. This problem got even worse when professional farmers started to enter the space. These civil farmers could basically create countless fake wallets and then use them to target airdrops to extract millions of dollars at the expense of regular users. So why don't the airdrop projects just ban them, right? Well, this type of farming actually boosts the protocol stats, which in turn benefits the founders as it helps them raise bigger rounds. So this is actually a win-win relationship between the civil farmers and insiders, which means that this tactic was generally allowed and hence was present in most of the airdrops out there. Unfortunately, this meant that airdrops became far too diluted as there were too many farmers chasing too little rewards. And that led to widespread disappointment and even outright rage from the community. So this created a dilemma for projects looking to do an airdrop. Do they keep the criteria open in order to include more people, but also run the risk of dilution? Or did they make the criteria much more strict, which may reduce some civil farming, but it also inadvertently excludes a bunch of regular users. So people get upset anyways and FUD the project as a result. This is a dilemma that many projects are struggling with. And we've seen this play out in real life with a few high profile airdrops that flopped. Those projects, along with many others, are way down from their launch price. And literally everyone involved, the users, the team, the VCs are all unhappy and demanding change. So now we find ourselves in the position where the crypto world knows that we have a problem and that something's gotta change. But just how do we solve this tricky problem? Well, to find out how, we can start by looking at some recent examples of airdrops that flopped and see what we can learn from them. But before we get there, I wanna update you on something that I covered in one of my prior videos. It's the XDeFi wallet, who's also our channel partner. If you don't remember, their wallet supports over 34 major blockchains, has a gas tank feature that lets you pay for gas on any network with USDC or their XDeFi token, and is generally an incredibly user-friendly wallet like we've never seen before. Now, they have been hinting at a major rebrand for a while now, so that's something I'm looking forward to, because it's going to come with a mobile wallet for the first time ever, as well as a revamped extension wallet. Personally, I think this will be bullish for their token, as 75% of the swap volume done through their wallet will be used to buy back and burn their token. Also, in general, rebrands have done quite well for crypto projects like Matic to Polygon, Ribbon to Avo, or even Merit Circle to Beam. 
So who knows, perhaps that can help XDeFi achieve their growth goals and reach similar projects in their niche, such as Coin98, Frontier Wallet, and Clover Finance. Anyhow, regardless of what you think about their token, I think their wallet is something that you should definitely check out. Because we can all admit that crypto wallets have been stagnant for years, like MetaMask, Trust Wallet, etc. Those all have the same interfaces, and we still have to deal with seed phrases, gas tokens, and switching between networks and accounts. So if you want a brand new wallet experience that's more like a fintech product, then go check out XDeFi using my links below. Oh, and just FYI, this wallet is great for farming airdrops as it supports most of the chains out there. Anyhow, back to the failed airdrops from which we can learn some lessons. And we gotta start with ZK Sync, which took a ton of heat for how their airdrop went. Right off the bat was their lack of transparency, which made a lot of people upset. They had vague airdrop criteria, which wasn't great, but it turned out that they actually gave themselves the power to arbitrarily decide who got what in terms of rewards, which to be honest, goes against the very ethos of an airdrop. So that by itself was enough to cause outrage, but that wasn't all as things went from bad to worse. On the day of the airdrop, ZK Sync announced that some Sybil wallets were able to slip by the specific detection systems. This meant that rewards for genuine users were being diminished by these airdrop farmers, and that made a lot of people upset. The hashtag ZKScam started trending across crypto Twitter, and the protocol itself took quite a beating as a result. After their launch, which happened in the middle of a Bitcoin crash, the usage of their protocol plummeted from over 15,000 transactions per day to just 250 per day in July. To make matters worse, the airdrop tokens were fully unlocked, meaning that everyone can dump straight away. And perhaps that's why the price is currently down 29% from launch. Anyhow, enough railing on ZK Sync, as there's another great example of how not to do it. And that comes from Eigenlayer, which is one of the most anticipated airdrops this year. Before it even launched, it had already racked up an insane $16 billion worth of user deposits into a pooled security system. Any user who had staked with their Ethereum restaking platform before the snapshot could claim a linear distribution of Eigen tokens scaled to the points they received. So that sounds good, right? Well, no, as Eigenlayer has been hit with its own round of controversies and criticism. First of all, eigentokens cannot be transferred, meaning that they can't be staked nor sold until a yet to be determined future date, which is completely up to the discretion of the team. Additionally, there are geographic restrictions placed on those who can claim tokens with countries like the US, China, and Canada all being banned. Now, normally, there's no problem with having geographic restrictions. But in this case, they didn't stop anyone from depositing funds or receiving points. So people were obviously pissed with their last second addition of those restrictions. Furthermore, Eigenlayer suffered from a lack of alignment, with only 15% of their tokens going to the community, which is almost four times less than what's going to the team and insiders. But all of this misses the bigger problem, which is its linear distribution schedule. This is a completely different way of distributing tokens compared to other airdrops, which try much harder to reward the little guy. With a little bit of napkin math, it seems like the top 2% of Eigenlayer stakers will receive around 90% of the stake drop, which is wild, as that's so heavily skewed against retail that the rich get richer and everyone else is left lacking. So all these issues combined have caused the pre-listing price of Eigen to drop around 50%. And it's sad because the botched airdrop has affected an otherwise promising project, and it didn't have to be this way. Anyhow, those are just two of the more high profile cases that have caused outrage lately. But unfortunately, the list doesn't stop there. Starknet got hammered for a perceived lack of transparency that led to many users getting no tokens at all, causing its price to plummet 71% since launch. Similar issues have plagued projects like Pixel, which is down 63%, and Dimension, which is down a terrifying 75%. So is everyone just messing this up? Or are there still some projects that get it right? Well, fortunately, there is one recent airdrop, which nailed it. And that we could probably learn a lot from. That would of course be the Jupiter airdrop that happened earlier this year. They distributed a billion tokens to a million wallets, all while avoiding many of the pitfalls that we mentioned earlier. It launched during a bullish period, allocated more than 50% of its supply to the airdrop, and only announced that they would even have an airdrop 
two days before the snapshot. This meant that nefarious actors and sibyl farmers didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of it, which meant that the playing field was quite level. On top of this, the project has a great user interface and a ton of real world demand, which means that its user base was super engaged and kept on using it after the airdrop. In many ways, this Jupiter airdrop is super important as it shows that it can be done successfully and that airdrops can still have a future in crypto. The truth is that airdrops can be a vital tool for protocols to attract users at the earliest stage. And when users come, those protocols can get valuable data to help them figure out which improvements to make. So there's no doubt that airdrops can be a useful tool. But what's critical here is that projects need to be super strategic with how they go about it. They have to make sure that they're aligning themselves with the community's interests, aka look out for their broader user base and strive to create as level a playing field as possible. Ideally, they launch during bullish periods so that they can ride the wave and not leave a bunch of users disappointed. And perhaps the most important point is to actually offer a product or service that has real utility so that the airdrop isn't just a brief moment of hype that fades away. If we flip this and look at it from the perspective of end users, there's also a few things that we can do to make sure that we get the most out of these airdrops. For example, we should potentially look into farming tokens that are lesser known, but still reputable for the best ROI. And perhaps the most important thing is to not chase after every airdrop expecting to get rich. People who have this mindset will have a much better experience. And it means that you won't have to join the angry mobs on Twitter calling every airdrop a scam when you don't get what you want. All right, so overall, my biggest takeaway from this whole airdrop ordeal is that crypto moves at the speed of light and those who don't adapt will get left behind. The reality is that airdrops are super different than what they were a few years ago. And the days of making loads of money with basically zero effort are behind us. But that doesn't mean that airdrops are dead. In fact, in 2024, airdrops have already distributed $4 billion and it seems like we might get a lot more as the markets are starting to heat up. So to answer our initial question, no, airdrops are not dead, but they do have to evolve and we have to evolve with them.